Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about how to rig up one of these torpedo sinkers for nighttime fishing. A uh, popular term for it has been come to known as the eddy bomb. Yeah, these work really, really well, um, especially on big fish, I believe, noticed. Um, knife jigs, flat falls, SKs, stuff like that. They tend to get a lot of action through the water column, um, which is good sometimes if the fish are up higher. But if they're down really deep and there's a lot of wind or current, these uh, eddy bombs work very well for getting straight down there to get you to depth to give you a chance at those big fish. All right, so the main ingredient of every eddy bomb is going to be your torpedo sinker. Yep. Uh, most guys are using something around a 16 or a 20 ounce sinker. Something heavy enough to get you down there, yeah. Get it down there. Um, and here's kind of the main components we're throwing on them. So we got an assist hook that we're putting on the top. Travel hooks going down on the bottom. And a uh, nice heavy leader. We're using 200 pound fluorocarbon today. All right, so one thing to think about when you're rigging these things, um, first of all, is whether you have a through wire sinker or not a through wire sinker. Um, what that means is it's quite literally the wire that's running through the center of the sinker. Does it go all the way through or is it just an eye and an eye that's put into the lead? Yeah, if you're using 50 pounds of drag on your big heavy uh, rail rod setup and you have a fish on here and it's pulling full tension, theoretically, this could pull out. Um, so that's why if you don't have one that's through wired, it's very important to know because you're going to have one additional step like we are going to show in this video. Kind of that first step we're doing is we're going to be essentially connecting this bottom eye to the top eye. So I'm taking a piece of this 200 pound fluorocarbon and I'm wanting to make it a little bit longer than my sinker. Figure I'm going to have to loop and crimp this thing to a split ring on the top and loop and crimp this thing to a split ring on the bottom. So I wanted about that length um, with the crimps on it. So I'm leaving a little extra length probably about one and a half times the length of the sinker here. What we're doing for our first step here is we're taking our split ring um, and our split ring pliers. We're using the Shimano split ring pliers, but honestly, these days there's lots of good ones. We're opening up that ring. We're getting it right onto that treble hook here. And that's going to be our first step for the bottom of the eddy bomb. Same concept. Um, this is going to be our assist hook that's going on the top. We're just sliding the split ring right onto there and letting her hang. We're taking our split ring pliers with our treble hook on it. We're attaching it to one side of our sinker. This will now be our bottom side, although didn't have one until now. <laughs> so we're using uh, this. Uh, this is must add, right? Correct. Must add five odd. This one is actually a JYG five odd um, jig pro fishing. Very similar to the must adds um, size wise. This is a five o that we're using. I would say as long as you're using anywhere from a five o to like a. Honestly, like 9.0 or 11.0 would probably be just fine. So I think a lot of guys like using these J-hooks like this that have uh, a little bit of attraction, and this actually has some glow-in-the-dark feature to it. So a lot of guys like using that for their eddy bombs um, because they're worried that maybe down at that depth the fish won't see it. Definitely, and there might be some to be said about having just a little bit of glow on a lure versus like a whole bunch of glow. I know a lot of stuff that lives down there tends to have a little bit of bioluminescence, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily you know, glow like a light. Um, okay, so that's basically our first couple of steps. Now, if this was through wired, we'd be basically done. Correct. If this but was through wired, we'd be slapping a leader on the top and it'd be ready to fish. This um, one is not through wired though, so we have one additional step. Cool. Which we will show you. All right, so what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm taking our crimping sleeves and I'm taking a couple of chafe tubing protectors. I'm going to go ahead and slide my crimp sleeve onto my line here, and I'm going to give it a, a chafe tube right after. Like fit. Boom. So there's step one. We're going to take that, we're going to crimp it up to this top split ring, or the bottom split ring in theory, as long as you do them one at a time, it doesn't really matter which. Going back through my crimp here. And then as with any time we're crimping, you always want to take this little tag end and burn the end off of it. Uh, we talked about this before, but that's going to allow you to mushroom out that end. It's actually going to flare out, and when it cools, it'll harden. It'll actually be so wide that it won't fit back through the crimp, even if it wanted to. Yeah, just in case your crimp decided to slip by some, uh, some bad luck. Okay, so at this point, I like to leave just a little, little bit of tag end hanging out of my crimp sleeve there. If it ever were to slip just a touch. I would know and I would be able to mitigate that. Yeah, you'd be able to recrimp on the next fish. Okay, so what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm taking my crimp, and a big mistake I see is a lot of guys want to hit it um, the skinny way this way. So you always want to flip your crimp sideways 
feels almost counterintuitive. What I'm doing here is I'm leaving just a little bit hanging off of the end. What that's going to do is when I crimp it, it's going to kind of squeeze it out in almost like an hourglass type of shape. As you can see, that very end of it starts to kind of bell outwards. And uh, what that does is if the line's getting pulled sideways off of the side of the crimp, it's going to give it not a sharp edge to pull against. So I'm going to finish this crimp up. We're going to go one down the middle, same direction. And then we're going to go one on the end with a little bit more overhang in there. Okay. So far, you got your ring, you got your hook, you got your treble hook. And we talked about the through wire. So this is going to be the big difference here. If you didn't have a through wire sinker, you'd want to add this step. We're going to essentially be tying these two rings together. If this torpedo sinker just gets absolutely demolished by a big fish, it wouldn't really matter. You could pretty much just reel up your hooks in line and no lead in between and you'd be just fine. We're going to do the same for the bottom end here. So we got the crimp sleeve on the line. We got the chafe tubing on the line. And we're going to go to our bottom ring. And one thing to note is a lot of guys like to make these really, really tight. If you do, you see how it kind of wants to pull that bottom ring up at an angle. So you want to leave it hanging just a little down so it has a little bit of freedom to swing. And I'll show you that when it's all crimped up. Just a little bit of extra play, yeah. Um, and it's very important to go to the split rings, not to the original ring of the sinker if you're doing this, because that would defeat the purpose of uh, a non-through-wired uh, torpedo sinker. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good call. The same deal, guys. We're burning the end here to mushroom it out. Letting it cool a little. And I'm just kind of tapping it with the edge of the lighter, making it kind of mushroom itself out. Yeah, flaring it out a little more. Okay, so same deal here, guys. I'm going to leave just a little bit overhanging off the edge of this crimp. This one's a little tougher to get in because I'm trying to sandwich it in between the sinker and the hook. So we're going there. One. Going to scoot it up the way, go up the middle here. And it is worth noting, too, that there are different kind of crimps. So sometimes you'll see, like, the black ones, which are the brass ones. Um, they kind of have two sleeves on them instead of the one. The crimping is essentially the same. Um, effectively, you're going to crimp it all the same way. So there you go. At this point, we're going to lead her up. And uh, some guys will also take a little piece of like electrical tape, put it right around the sinker here to kind of keep everything compact and tight. Yep. I've um, seen guys use like glow in the dark tape, stuff like that. Definitely. Um, I've seen guys spray paint theirs. Some guys use chrome sinkers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've um, got glow sinkers, chrome yep. sinkers. Um, we've seen guys paint them every color under the sun pink, white, blue, solid black. Yeah. Uh, I think they work just about any way. So your last step left here is just leadering up. And this is about all you need, like three foot, something like this. Don't go crazy. Don't get something too long. This is 200 pound fluoro that we're going to be putting on this. You guys can see uh, right here, we've already got our barrel swivel on here. You want to crimp to a barrel swivel up top. Um, that way it's going to have plenty of freedom as it goes down. Uh, Nate's got the other end here. He's going to show you to put on the Eddie bomb itself. Perfect. And this is kind of how we sell our leaders here in the store. Um, so if you were making your own, you could certainly put a swivel to it, a snap swivel, a split ring, whatever you prefer. Uh, we do ours in the shop here to a uh, swivel. That way you don't get tangled up and you can tie it straight to your line. So same process here, guys. I got my crimp sleeve on, got my chafe tubing on, and we're going through the split ring here, not through the eye of the weight, as Steve said. That would definitely defeat the purpose if we hooked a big one. Okay, so we're through. We're going to go ahead and burn our end here again. And this is a step a lot of guys will get lazy on and kind of skip. I cannot stress the importance of this. Um, when we get new guys here in the shop, I'll usually have them burn an end and pull on a crimp uh, just to see how hard you can actually pull on it without crimping it. And you would be surprised. This would probably be a cool video. All right, so same concept here, guys. I'm leaving just a little bit overhanging. Go ahead and give it its first crimp. I'm going to scoot up the line here, give it number two, and scoot up the line again with just a little bit overhanging to the other side, and we're giving it its final crimp. And that's it. This thing's ready to rip. So, like you were talking about, some guys do like to tape this down because, theoretically, this top hook could very well get caught in there, right? Definitely. So that's something you may want to look at if you're having to do this additional step. Um, but this is good to go right here. This short little leader is all you need. Um, if it gets inhaled by the fish, this 200 pound should work pretty well for abrasion resistance. Um, and this is a proven big fish killer.
this is definitely a little bit of labor involved. Um, you got to have your crimping sleeves, you got to have your crimps, all other stuff, crimpers, etc., and a little bit of knowledge. So if this seems like a lot to you, you don't want to rig one of these up on your own. We do have them ready to go here on the shelf. Um, here's like some glow offerings and some chrome offerings that we have here. Uh, rigged up the same way, treble hook on the bottom, single assist hook up top. And uh, these ones run about $40 all rigged up here in the shop. Both these options right here are through wired. You can see that there's no line from split ring to split ring uh, because this wire goes all the way through the lead on both sides. So if you hook one on the bottom or the top, it doesn't matter. It can't pull apart. So just some bonus content for you guys here. We touched on uh, how important it is to burn the ends of your crimps before you crimp them. Uh, we're going to show you what it looks like if you were to burn the end of your crimp but not actually crimp it. Um, so how much pressure could that actually hold if and when you needed it to do so. As backup just in case, yeah, if, you're, uh, if your crimp job slipped, this could save your fish. All right, so I'm burning my end here, and I'm kind of mashing down the ball with my fingers. Um, it's going to ball it up, and then once it cools, it's going to all become one solid piece. Flared out larger than the whole of the crimp. So we've kind of given it a sec to cool here. Um, it's hardened back up. And we're going to pull on this thing and see how much pressure we could apply before it slips. You guys can see the crimp is not crimped down at all. So uncrimped crimp, or crimping sleeve, I should say. We're going to hook this on the sinker here, and we're using a spring scale just to show you how much pressure uh, it's going to hold on to. So hopefully Nate doesn't pull me over. Yeah. It, right. I mean, it'll definitely slip, but you'd be amazed how much it can actually hold. Oh. Perfect. So looking at that right there. 50 over 50 pounds before that slip so if you uh if you had a failure in your crimp you still could use 50 pounds of drag before it theoretically would slip which gives you a chance you're still in the game so definitely an extra step that you might want to take to catch that big fish very important